This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Hey guys, Ibra here with Hurricane X, and gamers today have higher demands when it comes to features that they should expect on a gaming laptop. Options like a nice vibrant display, thin profile, and the most efficient horsepower to drive modern games at high settings. Today we have Gigabyte on board with the P35K version 3 that tries to satisfy those demands, but for $1500, is this gaming notebook even worth considering over the competition? Let's find out. Our configuration here has an Intel Core i7 quad-core processor clocked at 2.6 GHz that can turbo boost up to 3.6 GHz with 8 GB of 1600 MHz memory, a 120 GB SSD along with a 1 TB hard drive and a GTX 965M video card with 4 GB of VRAM and it's awesome to see an adequate amount of memory on the GPU. Also note that Gigabyte sells an upgraded version of the P35 that houses a quad HD screen 16 gigabytes of RAM and a GTX 980M for almost double the price of the regular P35. The build quality of the notebook is outstanding. The chassis itself is made out of aluminum that gives it a nice robust feel. Although the dark aluminum is a fingerprint magnet, so you'll have to wipe it often to maintain a clean presentation. Gigabyte did go with an understated design with minimal visual aesthetics like the logo engraved on the laptop's lid and the two exhaust vents at the rear to help with cooling. I wish they were consistent with the quality of the material used in the notebook. For example, the top lid is made out of aluminum, but the bezels around the display are plastic. The screen shows signs of flex when force is applied on both ends, so if Gigabyte chose an all-around aluminum frame for the bezels, this would not have been an issue. The 15.6 inch matte display sports a resolution of 1920 by 1080 that's IPS, meaning that viewing angles are excellent without any contrast shifts with deep blacks although I did notice some backlight bleed in the corners. One thing to point out are the hinges between the display and the chassis are so delicate. Opening up the display at about 30 degrees will not hold up and will result in the lid closing at a faster rate. The P35 weighs about 2.2 kilograms and is impressively thin at only 20.9 millimeters. The 15 inch form factor should fit most laptop backpacks that can house an average size 15 inch notebook and I didn't have any trouble traveling around with it. The LED notification lights at the front are subtle. There is a power check button that indicates how much power is left on the battery using the notification lights. Taking a physical tour of the I.O. ports on the P35, there is a Kensington lock, Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, a separate headphone, microphone jacks, and an SD card reader on the left side. Towards the right, you'll find an AC power input, VGA and HDMI outputs, two USB 3.0 ports, and a mini DisplayPort 1.2 that can drive an external 4K monitor at 60Hz. Surprisingly, there is an optical drive included at the front that can be swapped for expandable internal storage. At the bottom, you can easily access the RAM compartment where memory capacity up to 16GB is supported, although opening the compartment did require using tweezers in order to access the RAM slots, so be extra careful. The power button sits in the middle of the speaker grille with decent loud and detailed stereo projection with audible bass response. Let's take a listen. And right below is a full-size backlit keyboard with a WAC zone highlighted with an extra outline for easier distinction while gaming. The wrist rest area is quite large, that is a plus, but the keys have a very short travel distance making typing quite unpleasant. Also they require a bit more pressure than expected, so there's definitely a learning curve making sure you can type on this keyboard properly. Furthermore, the mouse pad is terrible and I mean it. It's unfortunate Gigabyte decided to slack off on one of the most important parts on the laptop. First, the tracking surface is not smooth, making any fine cursor navigation a total pain. Second, the left and right clicks are built into the bottom of the track and are really difficult to press. 
and the surface still recognizes tracking, so if you press left click and your finger slides a little, the cursor will still move on the screen as well. I would highly recommend using an external mouse if you don't want to pull your hair out. We were really surprised by the battery life with its 75.8 watt hour battery that lasted almost 4 hours in our standardized test. Hardware optimization is very good. Coming on to our gaming performance, the GTX 965M with its whopping 4GB of VRAM had surpassed our expectations, and launching Battlefield 4 on Ultra at field of view at 85, we were rocking 49 FPS on an average with acceptable minimum at 29. GTA 5 on very high is staying somewhat strong with 41 frames on average and dipping to the mid 20s for our minimums. Lord of Fallen looks gorgeous and we're staying about 30 FPS for average but stable at 25 frames for the minimum. Opening a Metro Last Light at high settings with advanced physics on wasn't expecting much out of this with 25 frames on average and hitting the minimums at 16. Less demanding games like Dota 2 maxed out once totally fine with the high 70s on average and high minimums as well. Lastly, Natural Selection 2 maxed out runs not as smooth as I'd like, hitting just below 40 and just occasionally dipping to the low 20s for minimums. Now remember, the 965M is a mid-ranged mobile GPU intended for medium to high settings and it easily achieves frame rates above 60 with a few settings toned down. For cooling, the P35 could be better, getting 51 to 60 degrees Celsius for the GPU and CPU respectively on idle while the temperature spiked up during load at pretty high 80 and 97 degrees Celsius. Luckily, the cooling system was not outrageously loud, and it's totally tolerable. The thermal footage looks great, not particularly a hot spot for any of those contact points. That's a big plus considering how hot the CPU gets, and the area around the power button gets really hot to touch. Overall, we're pretty happy with the P35K from Gigabyte. The chassis is well built, it's thin and light for its form factor, 1080p is all we need for a 15 inch Windows machine and we're super happy to see an IPS panel for wide viewing angles. The performance is what you'd expect from a mid-range mobile GPU and the battery life is impressive. If only Gigabyte didn't skip putting more effort into the trackpad and keyboard, this P35 would have been a totally solid contender for the price range. But when fundamental elements are not perfect, you cannot expect the rest to make for its shortfalls. And that concludes our review. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content. Give us a like if you found this review helpful and we'll see you in the next one.